Hello, everyone. Welcome to topic two for week two. Our topic now is storytelling two and for teens. You might notice that heading is a little different than our storytelling for children, because I think we're looking at two different purposes here. So when we look at storytelling for teens or two teens, your selections are going to be a little different and the anxiety level is probably going to be a little higher because teens can be snarky. And our purposes are a little bit different. It's not just focusing on the straight up literacy for teenagers. It's more reminding them why they should like stories or why they do like stories and how important they are. When I started preparing to teach about storytelling for teens, I noticed that there was less material out there to offer you as examples. You may notice that the chapter is short. I think the chapter is excellent on storytelling for teens, but it's brief. There are some ideas on types of stories that teens like and how to set up a format and that type of thing, but it is a short chapter. You may also notice that some of the examples I've offered are a little bit more adult. Uh, if you have some discomfort when you watch any of those sample storytelling, uh, keep in mind you don't have to watch if something makes you uncomfortable or if there's some salty language or colorful language that makes you uncomfortable. I just wanted to offer a wide variety of storytelling samples so that you can see how different it is to tell to an adult, a teen, and then to youths, toddlers, and babies. There's a wide range, and I want to make sure you see that whole range. So when you're storytelling for uh, young adults, it's very different than storytelling for a toddler story time. Your teenagers are a little more jaded. They're going to be a bit more reserved at the beginning for certain and the object is not so much to promote literacy. Hopefully they're already literate. They can already read and write. But the idea is to make sure that they're still interested in stories or to remind them that stories are fun, that stories are enjoyable, that stories are a source of gladness, and that stories are still relevant to them. So that's, that's much more of what your storytelling to teens is about. If you are really interested in storytelling for teens and you want to learn more about it, like if you're going to be a young adult librarian in a public library or if you're going to a high school library and you would like to know more, you might want to check out this book or purchase this book called Storytelling for Young Adults. It is by an author named Gail DeVos, not related to the evil Betsy DeVos. Sorry to be political, but um, they're not related. I looked it up. And it has great stories, ideas, recommendations. Uh, this is an excellent resource if you are going to be working with young adults somewhere in a public library or in a high school library. So you might consider this. I will tell you that since I work with teenagers, they're going to act like they're not interested in stories, but really they are. They enjoy stories. Most of my storytelling is limited to book talking where I'm leaving them with a cliffhanger, trying to get them engaged or trying to get them to want to read things. But I will tell you that teenagers still like to hear a story read aloud and they get really angry if you don't finish. That's part of my technique when I'm trying to get kids to check out books is that I will give them a little teaser or cliffhanger and then, then they want to read the rest of the book. But story types that teenagers really like they love fantasy. They're really into the dystopian fantasies right now, too. Uh, horror and ghost stories. Everybody loves a good ghost story. They like the urban myths. They certainly enjoy humor. They like straight up myth. They certainly enjoy some conflict or drama. And riddles or problem solving stories are always a hit with teenagers. As you prepare to story tell to young adults, you're going to want to think about program flow and you're going to want to make sure that you have planned very well and practice very well because teenagers can be very skeptical about storytelling. So you want to make sure that you're ready. I really liked this sort of acronym from Elizabeth Ellis that was explained in our textbook as far as planning your program flow that goes ha ha aha. Ah, and amen. 
Ha ha is start with some, some humor. That is a great icebreaker for any level of storytelling, but particularly for teenagers, you wanna get them on your side. Then you might wanna go with a aha story, pique their curiosity, some sort of riddle, a pourquoi or a jump story that will really get them engaged and thinking about what you're doing. And then I like the idea of including the ah story. You want to engage emotions. You've already got them on your side if you've done your ha ha aha very well. So you want to engage the emotions and have something with deeper meaning and then finish off with an amen story. As a story to remind us or to remind your audience of ancient wisdom or some new insight, you want to leave your audience feeling like they're smarter or they are smart already from hearing your stories or that they've engaged or that they're clever somehow or they feel better about themselves. So that amen finisher is a great idea. You may also notice that program flow in this particular lecture has been a little dodgy because I'm trying to watch World Cup while I'm doing it. I've got to turn off the TV, but hopefully I'll be a little smoother on the next ones. Okay, so now we're going to shift focus a little bit. We were talking about storytelling to young adults. Be prepared, even more so than with your three and four year olds. Be prepared for young adults. They're testier. Now we want to talk about storytelling for young adults. And one of the great things about storytelling for young adults is building rapport. I had that last on the list here, but I think it should be the first one. I meant to change it. So we want to build rapport. We want to build rapport with the students that we're training to tell stories, and we want to real, build rapport between students. Storytelling is a great way for them to get to know each other. When I have done a storytelling unit with teenagers at my high school, it's one of those things where sometimes you walk into a classroom where they have not built rapport with each other. And I start off with reading poorly to the kids and then reading well to the kids and then allowing them to choose some stories where they practice a little bit. And then they have to practice in pairs and they have to move around and practice in different pairs and then offer each other feedback. And so it's that pair work where they start to work together that's very effective as far as storytelling um, or building that rapport and learning their stories. We have other objectives though. We're trying to get kids to remember that they like stories. And that is, I think one of the most power, powerful things we can do because kids stop reading or they, reading greatly declines the older they get. I know that for my own children, they were avid, avid readers until about eighth grade. And then it fell off precipitously when they got to high school. Some of that is engagement in sports, engagement in drama, and a much heavier course load gets in the way of reading. But it's also, they forget. They forget how much fun a good story is. And so when you're teaching kids to tell stories, it's a reminder to them of how much fun those stories are. It can also help kids, uh, it leads them to write, write their own stories. That is something that I have not taken my storytelling unit to that next step and I'm thinking about that as I'm teaching this class. I think I'm going to change that unit around a little bit and have them do some storytelling after they've told stories to um, kids at the daycare near my high school. It can lead to other projects, digital storytelling. There are so many digital tools out there that can help kids tell a story. They can do Powtoons, they can do Flipgrid, they can do all sorts of things where they can tell stories online. And that's some of what you're gonna be doing with your digital storytelling project. Um, my kids watch Snapchat stories all the time. I don't know how complicated they are. I don't think they're very complicated, but kids are interested in telling stories. So those projects can be tied into any type of storytelling that you do if you're in a school or if you're working in a public library. You can work on a storytelling project or have a contest or something like that. It can also aid in explanations. You can have students do storytelling that is biographical in nature. So they could do biographical storytelling about a political figure, historical figures. You could have them read the notorious RBG and do storytelling about Ruth Bader Ginsburg or other Supreme Court justices. There's all sorts of stuff you can do that would engage students in storytelling that promotes much more than just telling the story. It's promoting the curriculum. It's promoting competition, or it can be. It's promoting getting to know each other also. 
It's a great thing to do to teach kids to tell each other stories or to tell stories to others. Your teenagers are gonna wonder what you would want them to tell stories about. It can be about their dreams, what they hope for. It can be images from their lives. It can have to do with telling their feelings. And certainly, particularly with teenagers, it can have to do with their formation of self, their self image, their image of themselves within their families, as students, as athletes, as thespians, all that new forming identity, um, explaining where they come from, their genesis story, all of those things can be incorporated into storytelling for teens. As you prepare for storytelling for younger children, you are the sage on the stage for younger children. But when you're talking about storytelling to and for teens, you're talking about more advanced level. They have moved along developmentally to the point of they can perform formal operations. I'm doing a little theory here from Piaget. Teenagers can think in an abstract manner. They can not only follow a story where you know the beginning, middle, and end, but they can plan out their own story. They can manipulate those ideas in their heads and they don't have to have it on paper in front of them. Though, of course, if they're going to be recording a story or telling their own story, they're gonna to wanna to write it down so that they can practice. But it's that more formal operations that teenagers are capable of that, me, that makes storytelling with them, not just to them, really enjoyable and helpful educationally. Those formalized operations that teenagers are capable of do need some coaching from you. All those synapses are firing in teenagers' heads and they have tons of distractions. That's one of the joys of storytelling telling to and for teenagers is that if you can capture them, if you can hook them, you can help them disengage from some of the technology that is so distracting. I do want to tell you a little bit of a story about um, when I took my students to tell stories to the toddlers across the street at the daycare. I had a young man who was rough around the edges. He had tattoos and gold teeth and some dreadlocks and wore very saggy pants and he really I would have been intimidated by the fellow on a, in a dark alley. I'm inti intimidated by most fellows in a dark alley. But anyway, he was a rough around the edges kid and we took him to the daycare across the street from my high school. And he sat down with his book and he was waiting to tell his story. And a little typical Southern girl who was about three or four uh, walked right up to him. She was wearing a smocked dress, Mary Jane's, and lacy socks with a big bow in her hair, I'm not kidding, and plopped right down in this rough kid's lap, and he looked flabbergasted. He was shocked to have this child in his lap, and he looked at me and said, what do I do? And I said, read the story, man, and He's a kid who did not smile much, but I have never seen that kid smile that much as that day. He just could not stop smiling because this little girl had no fear, came up to him and plopped right down in his lap and was ready for the story. It was adorable. I, it's just one of those, it's that kind of experience that has me sold on getting kids to tell stories either to other children or to tell their own stories. One of the other benefits to having kids tell stories and hear stories and tell each other stories or to tell stories to them is that it really does continue to lead to that moment of, I really like that story, Miss Haverkamp. Can you help me find another one like it? I've had that with, even with the storytelling project where my high school kids read children's stories to other children. It reminded them and they came to me and said, hey, I remember reading the story as a kid. Are there any other stories like it? And so it can lead them to something else or to a new love of literature or a reminder of that love of literature. So that is one huge part of that purpose. So remember with storytelling to teens, prepare very well. Prepare very well, please. It's really important. And 
You've got a number of objectives when you're still telling two teens or four teens. You want them to remember how joyful literature is and how great stories are. And you want them, you want to lead them to telling their own stories, to finding their identities and their voices and sharing that with other people. Because storytelling is beneficial to everybody who engages. It's good stuff. Uh, just a reminder, I will have our Ride Along 3 video up probably by tomorrow. I did go to visit with our classmate, Jordan and went along with the bookmobile on a story time visit and um, that was great a great reminder for me i have not done storytelling for small children in a long time and jordan did a great job of engaging her audience you'll get to see that i also want to let you know that her my video of her is going to count as her read aloud her first storytelling project it might take me until tomorrow to get it in there for her so i just wanted you to know that that's coming and um I will post that soon. I did want to do a little video editing, but I'm not going to edit it much. I will just put up um, most of what we've got and some photographs with it. So uh, carry on. I hope you've had a good time creating your storytelling. Um, also keep in mind that as you're prepping to do the next couple storytelling experiences, most daycares will let you come visit to tell a story. I have never been turned down. I've done it in uh, several times. I call up and say, hey, I'm the librarian next door or I'm a library student. Would there be a possibility for me to come visit your daycare and tell some stories to some kids? If you would like to try your storytelling out on a real audience, and I promise three-year-olds are not that scary. They're not great audiences in some ways because they're a little squirrely, but they're not scary. I highly recommend trying to find yourself a live audience. Get out there, y'all. Tell your stories. Okay.